So, uh, as we discussed that we will be starting uh, programs or writing programs with floating point numbers. Now, uh, what can be the program? Say once again n will be inputted by the user, n as input will be accepted from the user. Now, I will have to compute in the program say 1 square by 2 that is 1 square by 2 means 1 into 1 by 2 divide plus this will continue you can understand once I write 1 square by 2 then this is a float result is a floating point number plus 2 square which we have similar programs we have written earlier 2 square by 3 plus 3 square by 4 plus 4 square by 5 and so on you can understand how long will it continue it will continue up to n so maybe the last number is n square divided by what will it be n plus 1 definitely you can understand this see 1 square by 2 so this is 1 this is 2 this is 2 square 2 this is 2 this is 3 3 square by 4 this is 3 this is 4 4 square by 5 this is 4 this is 5 so definitely last one will be n square and this will be n plus 1 so I will have to compute this now you can understand when n is accepted as an input from the user this n is definitely an integer this n is definitely an integer being accepted from the user similarly when i write the program i will need a for loop in which maybe this i will have to assign as i and i will keep on iterating or incrementing in each iteration as one means one will become two i will become one, two from one in the next iteration i will become three in the next iteration i will become four in the next iteration i will become five and so on i will continue till it becomes n once i becomes n plus 1 you need to go out of the loop so this loop of for should continue with i equal to 1 to i equal to n but what i want to point out is this i is an integer remember this is i if this is i what is this i plus 1 next time in the next iteration i will become 2 this is i this is i plus 1 3 in the next iteration this is i 3 what is this i plus 1 4 so this i, i plus 1 all these are integers but you remember once you divide this, this is floating, this is floating point. So I need to declare this, in, so uh, another thing I must point out this entire sum as a whole what will it be? It will definitely be floating point, it will be float sum. So let us declare that float sum because the sum ultimately has to be float. So, float sum, I need to declare the sum as float. However, I need an integer i for the iteration where i will continue from, i will continue from 1, 2, 3 and so on up to n. So, integer i is needed and definitely for the last term an integer n is also needed which is definitely an integer again. Now, I will have to accept n from the user. So, the basic printf should remain as it is printf enter n. Sorry, I need to close this. Okay. So, enter n. I need to scan that n also. Scan f percent d ampersand n. So, this n is also scanned from the user. Now, I need the for loop to iterate for loop should iterate from i equal to 1 to i less than equal to n to i plus plus and i plus plus. Now in this for loop what should be the content? The for loop content should be something which can compute please understand is not it so which can compute i square divided by i plus 1 is understand is not it so within this for loop what do I need I need to write the program which should be able to compute i square divided by i plus 1 this is what I want to compute in this for loop so this part how to write it is very simple 
it is absolutely very simple how to write it it is i into i i into i divided by i plus 1 that is what you want to compute because initially i is entering as 1 so first time you are computing 1 into 1 1 square divided by 2 next time i becomes 2 so next time when you enter the loop you are computing 2 into 2 2 square by 2 plus 1 3 2 square by 3 so next time when you enter i is 3 so what are you computing 3 square by 4 have a have a look have a look at this 3 square by 4 so once again i will become 4 next time it is 4 square by 5 4 into 4 by 4 plus 1 4 square by 5 have a look at this have a look at this one 4 square by 5 is not so in this way last time i will become n and you are going to compute n square by n plus 1 which is the last term but this as a whole has to be added to sum so that you get the final sum but do not you forget that sum is a float after all this sum has to be initialized also this sum is a float sum has to be initialized also but remember this i is an integer so i into i is integer i plus 1 is integer you are dividing an integer by an integer means it will automatically change it to an integer even if you write float over here it will not help if you write float like this i told you in the previous program that this will not help because i is an integer i into i is integer i is an integer i plus 1 is an integer so an integer divided by an integer will change it to integer at the very beginning then you type cast it to float means you are changing basically 4 maybe if, if this division result is 4 you are changing 4 to 4.0000 but the float the uh, the floating point that points after the, the digits after this decimal the numbers after this decimal does not remain intact so what you need to do is before dividing you have to type cast you have to change i to float you have to change sorry i into i to float you have to change i plus 1 to float and then only you can divide so this division has to be done after you change it to float so it has to be done like float of i into i float of i plus 1 so what it does is i into i is changed to float that is if i is 3 3 into 3 is 9 float is changing 9 to 9.0000000 and if i plus 1 is 4 if i plus 1 i is 3 so i plus 1 is 4 so float of 4 means it changes it to 4.0000000 so 9.0000000 divided by 4.0000000 will ultimately generate a floating a proper floating point number which has to be assigned to sum not assigned to added to sum sum equal to sum plus this because sum has to be initialized to how much it has to be initialized to 0 do not forget float of i into i by float of i plus 1 is this in the first iteration in the second iteration float of i into i divided by float of i plus 1 is this 2 square by 3 in the next iteration when i is 3 float of i into i divided by float of i plus 1 is 3 square by 4 and so on so every time whatever is the result that has to be added to sum but sum has to be initialized also where should i initialize i can initialize at the start of the for loop during the initialization can i initialize it over here sum equal to 0, 0.0 because after all sum is a float so i assign it as 0, 0.0 in this way you are adding the number different numbers to it and you are sure that this will ultimately generate your result only thing i need to do is a printf printf percent d or f f because i have to print a floating point sum print f percent f sum so this is how you print it and you get the result ultimately let me run this program let me see what happens but don't you forget to comment out this section which is not a part of the code it is just the explanation of what the code is so let me run it now alt r enter oh error error statement missing where did i miss it where did I miss it? Oh, okay. Here I missed. It. Here I put a semicolon, which is not created. For we, after the end of for loop, you don't put a semicolon. This means the uh, for itself. This this means the for contains a loop. For within the for, there is a block which is to be executed. Here you don't have semicolon. So let me run it now. D 
again error oh okay 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 i have put an extra bracket please check here there is a bracket here there is a bracket so this bracket is not needed so you get rid of it so let me run again enter in 5 11.45 see 1 square by 2 is 0 0.5 2 square by 3 4 by 3 calculate 1.33 and so on if you add five numbers it is 1 square by 2 plus 2 square by 3 plus 3 square by 4 plus 4 square by 5 plus 5 square by 6 and all these numbers added together will definitely give you 11.45 run it with an even smaller number and you can easily do a um, uh, oral calculation 3 4.083333 so you check out how 1 square by 2 is half 0 0.5 2 square by 3 is 4 by 3, 1.33. So, togetherly it becomes 1 point, you check out how, 0 0.5 plus 4 by 3, 2 square by 3, 4 by 3 is 1.33. So, 0 0.5 plus 1.33, how much is it? 1.83. Then you add 3 square by 4, 9 by 4, what is it? 2.25 add it with it 9 by 3 square by 4 is 2.25 so you add it with this whole thing you will get 4 point this number 083333 so i think you understand this you can very quickly calculate and check out that it works it will definitely work and this is the program which i really wanted to execute but now a small change let us not complete it over here before taking the break another small thing that i do uh, is instead of this one square by two if there was a factorial not really a floating point challenge but the programming challenge as a whole this was a factorial say uh, this is four factorial similarly four square by five factorial so check out one square by two factorial plus two square by three factorial three square by four factorial but still ultimately it is a floating point number which will come so lastly it is n square by n plus 1 factorial but then again the factorial also means that you know de denominator will increase so ultimately the floating point will remain but this sum will be a bigger sum or a smaller sum like if i give the number n equal to 5 if you remember in the last program the sum was 11.25 here the sum will be if i give 5 sum will be bigger or smaller the sum will be smaller because the factorial is being given in the decimal so the values of the decimals are being increased so anyway i need the n plus 1 factorial so you remember over here instead of float of i plus 1 i need the factorial output factorial of what i need factorial of i plus 1 so this program is basically meant for i square by i plus 1 factorial now how to calculate i plus 1 factorial see the first factorial that i need is 2 so if i initialize a variable called fact and initialize it to 1 factorial now what is 1 factorial 1 factorial is 1 so i have not basically initialized fact to 1 i have initialized it to 1 factorial but 1 factorial is 1 so fact is 1 now if i multiply fact with fact remains as it is i multiply it with i plus 1 what do i get initially when i is in, in is entering with what value is it entering the loop with i equal to 1 so what are you multiplying with it you are multiplying 2 i plus 1 you are entering first time you are entering with i equal to 1 so what is i plus 1 i plus 1 is 2 so what are you multiplying with fact fact was 1 factorial you are multiplying 2 with it so what is fact now fact is 2 factorial could i explain what i mean to say fact is 1 fact is 1 means fact is 1 factorial now i is 1 so what is i plus 1 i plus 1 is 2 what are you multiplying with 1 factorial you are multiplying 2 with 1 factorial so 1 factorial into 2 is 2 factorial so fact is 2 factorial i plus 1 is 2 fact is 2 factorial so i it is fact i plus 1 factorial next time when you are entering you are entering i plus plus with i plus plus which means i becomes 2 but fact was containing 2 factorial 
So now fact is 2 factorial, you are multiplying i plus 1 means you are multiplying 3 with 2 factorial. So what is fact now? 3 factorial, that is i plus 1 factorial. So fact will always contain after this line, fact will contain i plus 1 factorial. So you are dividing i plus 1 factorial with it. So this program will also run fine. Only this small change that I needed and this program will start running absolutely fine. But a fact value is needed. And don't you forget fact is an integer. Fact is nothing but an integer. But check over here, you are doing float of i into i by fact. Will it work? Yes, it will work. You are making float i into i, you are changing to float and divi dividing it by an integer. It will still remain a float because a float divided by an integer is float itself. That is also something shown. But for your safety, you can also write float over here does not matter that is you change the factorial to float also before dividing. So ultimately the result will be float and you are adding to sum and finally printing the sum. Let me run it, enter in 5, last time it was 11.45, this time it is 1.709722, much much smaller because the denominators have increased, you have, in, you have introduced the factorial at the denominator, check out. So denominators, factorial means denominators have increased. So as a whole, the result is decreased. So the sum has decreased. You can check out, taking a piece of paper, you can check out, the sum will be obtained properly. So let us take a bit of break over here and we will come back with further programs. Thank you so much.